Hey everybody, what's up? I'm Dylan D, and welcome back to How to Build Giant Robots in Minecraft. In the last episode, Step 1, we covered giant robot legs and touched a little on the engines that power them. Today, we will be covering Step 2, Structure and Switch Placing. Now, this is Part 1 of Step 2, which is Engine Wrap-Up and Start-Stop Triggers. There will be three parts total to Step 2. Of course, if I think of something else, I will put it in. But for now, we will finish speaking of engines today by talking about Start-Stop Triggers and how different ones function along with how to hook them up to the machines you wish to hook them up to. Now, I've had to divide this part here into two separate videos, only because my recording software can't render a video after it goes over 30 minutes. So I've divided star-stop engines into two separate videos, but more on that in a minute. Uh, part two of step two will deal with hooking up TNT cannons, and part three will be missiles. Step three of how to build giant robots in Minecraft uh, will be if you want to add wings or something crazy like that to your design, or like a face or something, I will teach you all of the little tips and tricks I know to give your entire weaponized build more shape and body. And now, for the surprise I'm sure everyone has been waiting for, I spoke with Cube Hamster briefly a few weeks ago, and he has given me the okay to show you all how to build Mega Gargantua. Now, I will be attempting to build Mega Gargantua right here in this tutorial series, block for block, with no world downloads and no schematics. Nothing except the mechanics Cube himself explains in his videos. The reason for this is to show you all that no matter what, if you pay close attention, keep trying, and never give up, anything is possible. It will not be an exact block-for-block -block duplicate of Mega Gargantua, but it will have all the same weapons, weapons placements, and features. Essentially, at the end, you will have a Mega Gargantua built by you, for you. Now, this will be a block-for-block -block explanation episode, so it is a little longer of a tutorial than everyone is used to. But hey, at the end, you'll be a lot more knowledgeable on slime block machines because I will be literally breaking down everything I do in excruciating detail. This video here will talk about strictly Mega Gargantua's start-stop trigger system. The other two start-stop triggers for the Rapticus legs and the legs that uh, resemble Colossus will be in the other video I will have a link to in the description. And one last quick announcement. Sunday will now be Survival Sunday. That's right. I will be launching the first two episodes of my brand new survival series, Survival with D, this Sunday, where I will put slime block machines to work for me in survival. Well, uh, and of course, all the other farms and doing everything else that we can just to have fun. And uh, I really hope you guys uh, are excited because I'm super excited for it. And uh, I, I understand. I'm playing on PlayStation 4 at the moment. And I understand that I'm not running on 1.9. But if you guys want to see me on the PC version of Minecraft, please like, subscribe, and share my videos as much as you can, and I will eventually be able to switch to Minecraft PC. Of course, I will still make sure everything I make works for console, but we all must work together to achieve our goals. So with all that being said, thank you all again so much for your support. Welcome new subscribers, and let's jump straight into how to build giant robots in Minecraft, step two, part one. All right, for Mega Gargantua and its start-stop trigger, um, here's its engine, and uh, here's its engine simplified. So obviously, you know, this is all just pistons pushing forward, so that's it. And then you have to, of course, place a piece of obsidian there to stop it. But if you wanted to uh, simplify uh, all this, of course, you could actually just use this same engine over here that's on this device, and you can put it at the back of a uh, Mega Gargantua. And you could use that same start-stop trigger. All you'd have to do is just make sure that it had uh, more pistons attached to it going forward, so you could actually have it at the front of the uh, of the vehicle. But uh, <clears throat> just to elaborate on all of this uh, stuff forward, I'm gonna this is uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, build in the start-stop engine for you onto the Gargantua. Uh, onto Cube Hamster's Gargantua here that I made a tutorial for. Uh, first thing you're gonna want to do though is move these blocks here and then just add a slime block to the top of that piston. Now with every slime block machine if you want to add something else there will always most likely always be changes that you must do to the overall machine in order to get what you wish. Now and in this instance we need to blow out this uh, piece of obsidian here and place it right here and then we have to move the machine to catch it up to this uh, obsidian. And this, this piston will. Now, the reason we've done this is because um, this whole piece right here is already at its 12 block push limit, so we can't really do too much with it. But if you look at this, one, 
two, three, four. This is just four blocks, so you know we can hook up a bunch of stuff. But we're gonna go ahead and come back to that. Uh, we're gonna do the start stop uh, trigger real fast. Now, as you can see, I've placed this block, and we don't really have anywhere to put a, a slime block. So what we're gonna have to go ahead and do is we're gonna have to blow out these slime blocks here, and I'm gonna want to have to put them down here. But as you can tell, that will also cause another problem. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is take out another row of slime blocks right here. Now. As you can see, uh, we still need to take out this piece here, and thankfully enough, this piece is just for show uh, on the overall build. And we can take it all out, and then right here, place an immovable block to take out that so you don't activate uh, your engine. And then you can actually do the same thing right here on this side, uh, just for symmetry reasons. Go ahead and blow this out real fast. And of course, immovable block to move that one. Good. Now we have all the room in the world. So coming back to here, uh, we have to reconnect this area to this one. But all we're going to have to do is, it came off the side last time, but obviously that's too close to this, so we're just going to come off the bottom. And as you can see, it'll catch right back up and it'll use the same amount of blocks that if we're to, if, that if I would have used if I would have put it, you know, from here to here. But yeah, just knowing that, we're going to go ahead and connect this little second piece. Now, it was here, but we're going to go ahead and just move it over one block and catch it up to this area here. And easy enough, we just throw in one slime block just like this, and boom, that whole piece is connected again. Now, if we come back this direction, you can see here, we have all the room in the world. So, all we have to do is slam a slime block here. Now, uh, second objective is to put the uh, start piece or the start little engine up here, you know, way up towards the front of the machine. So what we're going to want to do is stretch out that trigger as much as we can. We're going to come this way with a uh, sticky piston. Now this sticky piston is our trigger, you know, of course we'll update this and it'll move this block back and boom, the whole machine will start going forward. But how we're going to have to make this all happen, because this will be zero tick uh, pulsed back because of the position we have to put the redstone block in. But more on this in a second. Uh, the zero tick pulse will push this away, this whole piece away once, and then what, you know? So what we're going to have to do to make sure that that isn't a problem is add a piston here <coughs> and then slime block here here and a redstone block here. Now I know this goes against what I've told you before with the regular block being like the push back of uh, you know this will grab this it'll be an engine but this is a zero tick pulse and I'm referring to the fact that if you place a redstone block above this piston it's not going to do anything it has to then be updated but this redstone block sliding underneath this piston will update it and it'll just push it back forward just boom like, get out of the way, what you doing? And it will push uh, the slime blocks back forward one block to meet back up with this piston. Now, uh, this is not going to push this whole piece forward. What we're going to have to go ahead and do is um, add in like this whole other operation here. Now, all you have to do is come down two slime blocks from this one since it's another low uh, area since it's another low block area one two three four and now we just made it five six and seven We come off one block and now what we're going to want to do is attach this slime block to this uh, sticky piston and, it's, and uh, as soon as we do that I can explain to you why we'll come up right here here and then boom <clears throat> so once this is connected and this p piston will be updated uh, this will move forward first. Um, so what's going to happen is, is it will move forward and then this block will be attached to something else that will actually push it back before it goes forward. So that will update this sticky piston. Uh, one, uh, it'll zero tick pulse it to actually grab this entire piece and pull it forward instead of having any sort of piston to push it. Now knowing this and having this whole segment done, we actually have to put in uh, this little piece here. How we're going to go ahead and do this is uh, actually quite um, simple. We're going to go ahead and we have four blocks here, just like this, and uh, I know I don't think, I didn't think I did this on camera, but this is how this used to look. You want to go ahead and just blow out all those blocks and replace it just like this, and then you want to do the same thing on this side uh, right here. So it looks exactly like that. That opens up all the room you need for this, and of course we're stretching it out to the front. So we want it over here on this side, uh, over here, like how Cube has it. So what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, we're going to add another trigger to this uh, little build here, but this one is actually going to be a engine. Now this is going to be like just a manual caterpillar engine, so when it moves back uh, one, it'll move back uh, the other way, so of course this isn't two blocks. So for a start we need this to move back two blocks, so how do we do that? We actually move this whole segment, well 
this whole segment back one block and then when we'll have our redstone block here it will update this sticky piston as soon as this whole segment's been moved back and that will fire off and boom zero tick pulse it now how we're going to go ahead and do that is we got to push this segment back but keep it under the 12 block push limit so when we come back this way already we have an issue here so all we got to do we don't actually don't have to pull out the slime block uh, remove the redstone block and just place it right here boom easy as that but right here we're going to add our uh, second trigger because again we're going to do the same thing that this one does where it's just going to pull these this piece of blocks back so this sticky piston right here needs to be in this location and what's going to happen is is we will zero tick pulse this again you know zero tick pulse and all the way down we will pulse this and it will this sticky piston will push this entire segment right here back one block updating that sticky piston again and that will push it back the one block we need to start the engine now how we're going to go ahead and do this is we're going to go ahead and start bringing up our uh, uh, our little switch here so what we're going to have is this little segment and then we're going to place a redstone block right here now this is uh, just me planning for how I would like to move it in the future like how we're going to move this piece separately of course now this will uh, update this and this will move back one block because this sticky piston will move on its own first updating itself and then it'll grab this little piece here which then this block moving will update this uh, sticky piston and since it's touching it it'll update it as a normal engine and it'll move it forward and that is literally how all that works and then uh, to go ahead and make this a trigger what we're going to go ahead and do is place a sticky piston right here now I understand there's nothing on the other side of this one but that's just because what we're going to go ahead and do for this one is zero tick pulse it just so it'll just push it away and since this is going to be on the bottom it's going to be the same uh, instances over there the piston will go ahead and just push it right back into place uh, right where it needs to be so um, knowing all this we can go back actually and just add in our trigger I'm gonna come up about this far because this is about how f uh, you know how high up we want to sit so we're about gonna be sitting about right around here you know and we can uh, update the piston but hey look we're all right in the front now anyway uh, what we're gonna want to do of course is add our updating uh, sticky piston that we will update to start it and then of course we um, want this to be butted um, so a movable block then you know your redstone block so it doesn't move and then we want a regular block here and a redstone block here because of course this there will need to be a piston right here so you may update uh, so you, of course you may move this forward and then we'll go ahead and add in this piston as well that will move this segment here forward now just knowing that now we have to just literally hook up these two pistons to the build and it's like well <laughs> we don't have much room for that and timing wise they need to move at the exact same time or they will update the machine when we don't want it to so in order to do that what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna drop all the way back to this like little piston area that we used and we're gonna go ahead and just add a piston here and then we're gonna come off of it with one slime block like so come to the side redstone block here so you have this overall shape coming up off of it slime block here and then out one and then from this one one two three four five six with a piston here now with this piston it's very easy one slime block coming off then you can attach that piston over there slime block slime block and now this is now attached and then you need a redstone block right here to update this piston now if it was directly over the top of it this is going to be an issue. It's just going to keep it charged. But since it's one block above, this will act just as if we, you know, put a slime block down here and attached it with a redstone block. Or if it was out here with a redstone block, it would be the exact same thing. So, boom. Now, as soon as you have all of this, your start stop uh, little engine, your little start engine, of course, should work. And uh, give it a go. But now, of course, once we have this little mechanism, we need to add in the stop. So yeah, I'll make a cut and we'll go ahead and do that. All right, for the Mega Gargantua stop trigger, what we're gonna go ahead and do is assess what we already know about the machine. Now, what we already know about the machine is that everything is activated through this piston in the engine right here. Now, uh, what we also know is that we don't want it to be a obsidian timer in our machine, so what we're gonna go ahead and do is use the 12 block push limit against uh, that piston, which is basically the only thing we can do. Now, also what we want to know about uh, Cube Hamster's Mega Gargantua is that he has a uh, stop mechanism that you only update it once, and as soon as you update it, it uh, falls back and it stops the machine, but then at the exact same time, it resets that little stop trigger. So you can go ahead and just start it back up anytime you want with just one click as well, and you're good to go. Now, honestly, personally, I really enjoy this, this, uh, this start-stop engine. 
I, I think it's a I think it's a fun design. Honestly, it it, it took a, a lot of time to kind of understand it and to see what was happening with it. And uh, honestly, it took forever to rebuild it into uh, into Mega Gargantua to into Gargantua here to get it to work. So yeah, that was also real fun to uh, accomplish. But hey, everything's a puzzle. So with all that and everything that we know about the build, what we're gonna go ahead and do is, of course, we can't have a block here because this is you know gonna rub up against this. So we're gonna come out from this area over here with. Uh, one, two, three, four, five blocks total like this, giving us a total of one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine blocks. And then once we have those nine blocks, now I understand that this is not the 12 block push limit, but what we need is a one block here that will push uh, this full segment of blocks back to this sticky piston right here so it will look just like this now in order to do that this block has to move at the exact at like right after or at the exact same time that this engine uh, updates this area so instead of that piston actually updating the area it will be over the 12 block limit but at the same time we want this block to then move forward right after it stops that piston and then push these blocks forward and then this sticky piston will be its own separate entity which as you can tell here one two three four five blocks we can use this to uh, push this sticky piston along and how we can do that is just add in slime blocks just like that. Now this sticky piston will then get pushed into a redstone block right here, which will then uh, update it to the point where it will grab this uh, little segment of blocks and pull it back, and then boom, this whole segment will be uh, completely reset and you'll be good to go. Now um, obviously for the trigger uh, we want it to be symmetrical but uh, more in, on that in a second. That's why this is so long though is because I'm just trying to stretch it all the way to the front and make it symmetrical with this trigger so you know if you want we can set up a cockpit right here in the middle and we have easy access to both triggers. Now with all of that uh, being known what we're gonna go ahead and do is of course hook up this block this little magic block that will do all of our all of our work for us. Now uh, we can go ahead and just uh, come off of it uh, from the bottom because that's how we're going to have to hook it up with slime blocks uh, like so and then you can put a slime block right here and then uh, redstone block here now this of course will be pushed forward now what we need to know about this though is we have to have timing perfect so let's go over here to our engine and we know that this piston is a part of the engine and it will just cycle through as soon as we update it with our uh, starting mechanism so as soon as this piston activates of course it goes through the huge cycle but if we look at what what pushes that piston into place right right so right here this whole piece right here it has two jobs and it has, obviously you can tell with the two pistons here. Its first job is to make sure the piston continuously flows through this little uh, little entanglement of little engines going back and forth here, little piston pushers. And that will p uh, piston push all this forward into this segment, but we can count it. This piston will provide its first push. So one, two, three, and then this will try to push the fourth push of the entire build, if that makes sense. Now, this will count as just its first push, meaning this one also has a first push, but if we look, you know, this one goes up a separate direction, and as you can see, the pieces right here are much bigger than these little tiny pieces here. So we can actually play to our advantage the timing of the machine. Now, Dylan, how are we going to do that? It's actually kind of simple. Uh, all we have to do is just make sure this piston is trying to move at the exact same time that this whole piece right here will be trying to move, that this piston will be trying to move technically. So we want to make sure that uh, this piston here and that piston over there this uh, this one are trying to push at the same time because what will happen is is that this one will be over the uh, 12 block push limit by a lot and it'll be like oh nope can't do it but since this one's moving at the exact same time it will push this block forward and then push this into the position that it needs to be so when this sticky piston hits this redstone block it'll grab this segment and it will completely reset the machine without us having to do anything so in order to do this all we have to do is count yep counting that's it so we already counted one two three and then it's is the fourth move that we're trying to prevent so in order to do that we have one move two and then we come up here and then we have three and now we're trying to prevent the fourth move so obviously this is way too far away so we can come down this way throw a block in right here have a piston now this puts this entire segment at 12 blocks which is perfect this is exactly what we need it to be now this right here provides a new count look check it one 
two, and then this is our third move. Now we're trying to prevent the fourth move, so we want it to happen. This is our fourth move. We want it to happen at the exact same time, which I know it sounds like, how is that going to prevent it? But it will, it will, because it will try to move at the exact same time, this piston and this one here. And when they realize that they can't, because this one is at its 14 block push limit, it'll just stop. But this one will update and continue forward and, of course, etc., etc. push that all into place how it needs to be. Now the last thing we really need to do right now is just actually add in a trigger and what will push that trigger. So to make it symmetrical, all we have to do is actually come out like this. And as you can tell, we're now lined up with this row column of slime blocks. Now I'm going to come up three more for a total of four to make it exactly the same as the one on the other side. And actually I can go ahead, come in, sticky piston there, uh, and move a block on the back with a redstone block so we can bud this so it will actually be a trigger. And then uh, of course on the opposite side, just like the other side, we want a regular block here and a redstone block here just so this piston does not uh, get sucked in uh, by this block here and because if it was a slime block it would get pushed and then that would become an engine and then it would kind of just run away and we don't want that to happen so <clears throat> we have the exact same trigger it looks symmetrical now we all have all we have to do is make sure that this piston is moved forward but we have to also again make sure that uh, this sticky piston has enough time <clears throat> to hit this redstone block and update itself to grab this little segment before this segment moves forward. And again, same thing. All we're going to go ahead and do is make sure that this moves at the exact same time, uh, right after. So this will move in the next piston push, which can be in the within the same second, will come in and it will push this whole thing forward. And it will zero tick this to grab that segment and we're good to go. And easily, all we have to do is see that right here, we have a chance uh, right here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Good to go. That actually, that's ten blocks we could use that. The reason we wouldn't want to use this piece of the engine or anything is because it's one, two, three, four, five, then six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve blocks total. So of course that's not going to do anything for us. So we can go ahead and just strap a piston right here, putting that one at the eleven block uh, push right there, and then uh, we can literally just come right in straight up to that piston. Boom. Connected. And if you want, you guys can do this. I just like uh, compact builds uh, in my machines and stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and just throw this little piece down here. And uh, good to go. And as long as there's no pistons or anything in the way, you know, you won't see any problems from that redstone block. Now, we're going to go ahead and count this again, but for the top. Uh, and what I mean by this for motion-wise is that when it clicks into place and uh, this actually comes in, this piston here, that when this moves into place, it will be the exact you know same thing now it's easy to count because obviously this piston pushes both that and this forward so this whole segment gets pushed forward at the exact same time that this segment gets pushed forward so of course in theory you know this well not even in theory well I guess in theory but sorry for that <laughs> the sticky piston hits this redstone block updates it and then this whole segment will come in and then as soon as that happens, like literally, this comes in and then pushes that segment forward. So you're good to go. So it's not there for too long. It keeps the machine flowing forward. And, you know, you're not sitting there for hours trying to, you know, look at it and figure out what's going down. No. Boom. There you go. There's the full explanation of everything about the start-stop engine to Mega Gargantua. Now, just one last little thing real quick is uh, we have this uh, segment right here. Um... <laughs> what to look for there we go what to look for right now when we stop the machine is uh what i was talking about with how this will then eventually catch up with this block and it will make it look like it's kind of like this and it's like oh you know well, what happened to that little block in the middle and it's like well it's still there but they're just moving in such accordance with themselves that they're moving at the exact perfect time because this block uh this segment of blocks isn't in the way so uh to demonstrate this uh what i'm going to go ahead and do is start the engine and gar uh, uh, Gargantua right now will just go ahead and start walking forward and uh, then I will tell you what to look for when it's started. So as you saw right here, it's caught up to itself and it's now moving forward. Now, this will act just as it needs to, uh, just, you know, as you can see here, these move forward at the exact same time so it can activate and uh, 
pull that segment across. Now, what to look for when I stop it? What's going to happen is, is at the exact same time that this piston can't push any forward anymore, this piston will activate and actually push this entire segment forward, keeping it going exactly how it's going right now, but just to basically reset the machine. So in order to do that, you want to wait until this moves forward one block. And as soon as it does... Did you see it? What happened was, is as soon as it moved forward that one block and you uh, pushed this whole little segment back, uh, it instantly stopped, but then in that exact same time, it pushed this segment forward and it came forward and this whole piece pushed forward just how it was supposed to, to completely realign itself, even though the legs are actually in a different uh, stopping position than what they were last time. And there you go. That's the full explanation of uh, Mega Gargantua's start-stop engine. And of course, we will actually have to come back in and replace this engine here. We'll actually have to move it around uh, just to get the perfect, you know, position for like the TNT cannon that'll be right here in the middle, and you know, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you guys. But of course, uh, with slime block engines. Uh, and machines like this, they're all puzzles. And with every little puzzle piece that you add, you have to, you know, change up another large amount of puzzle pieces. But hey, I'm showing you how to do it, and, you know, we're going to get through it together. And uh, at the end, we will have a fully functioning Mega Gargantua. But that's going to do it for step two, part one of this installment of how to build giant robots in Minecraft. I really hope it was super informative and that everyone takes away something from it. And of course, that you check out the other video for step two, part one, where I break down even more types of start-stop triggers. Now, don't feel discouraged. With these types of tutorials, the more you watch, the more you learn. I had to watch Cube Hamster's ultimate slime block tutorials front and back numerous times before getting it right, which I will leave a link in the description to that playlist. And I hope everyone sticks around to check out all the other videos on my channel as well. But until Survival Sunday, you guys, later late.